I'm Scott Al Miller, and this is my daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua, but I'm not in Leon today. I am in Ciudad Sandino, the western suburb or kind of separate satellite city of Managua. It's always nice to come out here and see the place changing because it is really rapidly turning into a completely different place and not at all the place that you hear about in the news or from people who've been here and they're like, oh no, Ciudad Sandino, why would you go there? This is not in any way the same city that they remember. This is an amazing place that's really an up and coming location here in Nicaragua and has not gotten much attention. So I'm out at the Plaza Calle today to show off a little bit of what's happening here to give you an idea of Ciudad Sandino today. We're recording this right after we got back from on Canal Ocho doing the morning show this morning and I'm going to be heading back to Leon right after doing this recording. So we're going to show you the plaza right after the bump. It is an incredibly hot and bright day here in Managua today, and it's a little bit windy. We're always windy here in Ciudad Sandino because we're right off of the lake, right off of Lago Managua. And so there's a breeze coming through the city all the time, which is actually really good for living here because you actually have a lot of fresh air. Now today is quite oppressively hot. Like that just, it happens sometimes, but this is an anomaly. Most of the time, this is actually a decently cool part of Managua, which is already a city that is a bit cooler than Leon and Granada and several others. It's definitely not one of the cool cities of the country, but it's kind of in the middle. It really does kind of hit an average for the population. And of course, the median Nicaraguan lives in uh, Managua anyway, but Ciudad Sandino has so much more fresh air than the rest of uh, Managua that it does end up being a cooler place to live. So you're much more likely, both because of that and because it is a traditionally lower income zone, uh, you're gonna find a lot fewer houses that have air conditioning, for example, but you really don't need it here as much. And I'm saying this on a day where you would totally want it if you were gonna be here today. But so in the past, we've shown some, and I'm gonna show you some walking through the streets of Ciudad Sandino. This is the piece of Gaza that we're showing, which is the new name. It used to be the Carretera Norte, and that is the main road that comes past the airport on the east side of Managua runs all the way through the city and comes down through Ciudad Sandino and now runs all the way to the new highway heading to Leon. So both of the Leon highways connect to the Pista de Gaza. Now I don't know if they're keeping that name through the entirety of its run or just for its part through Managua or not, but it is, it is now what the street is known as. And so that comes down and is one of the main roads here in C Ciudad Sandino. Ciudad Sandino is a very large city of its own right. It is not just a part of Managua. It's far from being just a suburb. And so it, uh, it does have a lot of its own identity. Now this plaza that we're coming up on, the Plaza Calle, is a whole new construction. And it's part of this whole new wave of construction, sorry for the echo, uh, of, of construction that's going on in Ciudad Sandino. There's amazing stuff going on. Uh, and I'm walking through the plaza. I'm gonna grab some of these views so you can see. I'm gonna turn this around. Hopefully you get a good view of this from where I am. This part of Ciudad Sandino is just loaded with mountains. Of course, you're seeing all roofs here. No sooner did we get to where the housing development was and security came and talked to me and said that we aren't able to film anywhere in the Plaza Calle. So this is a really common thing here in Nicaragua and it's something that drives me quite crazy. And that is that you just, there's such an emotional feeling that you shouldn't be recorded. People really want this private life or they want uh, to feel, I don't know, elite. And so in shopping centers all over, we tried to film in Paseo Real a year or two ago and they said, no, we couldn't film there. And of course people are filming there all the time, but it's really when you're talking to the camera. If I carry around one of the uh, 360 cameras or whatever, Nobody says a thing, but as soon as I start talking to the GoPro and saying anything, then everyone's like, no, shut it down. You're not allowed to do that here. And they get pretty aggressive about it. And it's weird because they don't say you're not allowed to film. And this is a world where people film all the time, like every table, every meal at every restaurant, people are filming it but they're not supposed to be. But then when I film, they say, no, you can't, but, but it's just because I'm talking to the GoPro, not because of the fact that I'm filming. It's weird, right? So we have to put up with that quite often. So there's a lot of things in the country that we can't bring you the kind of film of that we wish we could. It's always private places, public places you can always film. There's no problem at all with that. Those are the places that of course, everyone comes in the comments and says we can't film, but of course we can. It's just, yeah, private property. It's a private plaza. They're allowed to make these rules as far as I know, and they do, and they enforce them. And all they do is tell you 
to stop filming and that's it. It's not a big deal, but it's annoying because there's so many things in the country that I'd love to bring you guys along for and show you more of. And there's just, and often it's when they're empty, but I understand to some degree that, you know, if people are shopping or they don't want to be filmed and they want to, you know, respect the privacy of people who are in a private area and it kind of makes it a, a kind of premium spot in a, in a sort of way. However, it also really hurts promotion of the area. So we're not able to bring you a lot of the best stuff in Nicaragua because it's just a cultural thing not to allow us to show the better things in life. But it really does a lot to harm promotions because, for example, this Plaza Cayi in Ciudad Sandino is absolutely gorgeous, has several good restaurants, a lot of places we'd really like to show you, and I'm sure they would really appreciate being shown. We're not able to because security doesn't think through what's good recording and what's bad, only thinks through, nope, this is a hard and fast rule and I'm not going to interpret it, which I understand. They're not paid to interpret it. But we did manage to walk around with the 360 camera, so we're gonna show you a little bit of what we were able to get. I just have to talk about it from somewhere else. So Plaza Cayi is attached to a new residential housing development, which looks absolutely beautiful. It's in a great area. I have always liked Ciudad Sandino and I've talked about it for years here on the channel. It's one of those places that everybody Everybody talks very badly about, but when you go, it's a beautiful city, has great weather, it has great uh, options for food and bars and going out. Shopping is still pretty weak. There's some, but it doesn't have the malls or anything yet, but I totally expect that it will. It's far enough outside of downtown Managua that it's often considered its own city, hence the name Ciudad Sandino and not Barrio Sandino. Uh, so it is technically considered its own metropolitan area, but it is certainly a suburb of Managua in, in reality. And the main road that we're on at at, Calle, uh, at the Plaza Calle is uh, the new, newly named uh, Pista Gaza, which is, of course, a memorial road uh, to the people of Gaza in the current conflict. Um, but that was previously the Carretera Norte, which is the same highway that comes past the airport, comes past the, the Capitol buildings, goes up over the hill and down into Ciudad Sandino. So that's what we're on. This is a really important road in the country, one of the most important, and it's one of the bypasses that connects a lot of other major roads together as well. Um, but that it's the one that the airport and the Capitol are on the actual Capitol buildings themselves uh, is a really big deal, as well as the new Parque Palestinia, which is along it, hence the names uh, going together. So in Ciudad Sandino, we have this really up and coming, really gentrified area. The plaza is a perfect personification of that. However, there's a lot of stuff out on the main streets as well that are absolutely gorgeous. There's just so much cool going in, whether it's these new restaurants with a lot of outdoor seating, there's indoor air conditioned areas in some of these as well. There's some new shops going in, nothing's too extreme. There's a new supermarket. Uh, there is um, a, a really tiny little casino here, one of the 777 casinos. Uh, and a few other things, including a beautiful bakery with some amazing looking baked goods and a, a really high end little bar uh, that we did not get to go in, but I'm hoping to check out at some point. But this whole area all along the Pista Gaza and along the Carretera Nueva, which is up in the uh, on the north side of Ciudad Sandino, ha is just full of really great shopping. There's La Colonia, there's Pizza Huts, there's lots of things to go out and do in this area. So this specifically is a part of the country that I really think is a wonderful example of where Nicaragua is going. It's growing, it is gentrifying, it is becoming a modern city in a country that has a tendency of skewing away from modern in a lot of cases. Now I live in Leon, which is very colonial, so when we're in Leon, it's very common to look at it as a very old city, because it is. And you may, from watching my channel, get the wrong impression of just how modern Nicaragua is, because its main tourist center, Granada, is 500 years old, and the city that I'm in, Leon, is 500 years old. But Managua is not that old and is definitely more modern, but still they don't make a huge effort at being ultra modern. Oh, there's some places, of course, but as a city, it is not a big push to be a big modern city. Ciudad Sandino, I feel, is leaning much more towards a modern area. It is a younger city built in an emergency in 1972 because of the earthquake, and most of the city was uh, built um, quite a bit after that. Its growth has come more recently. And so while it has a reputation as a rough barrio, and certainly parts of it remain a rough barrio, parts of it have become absolutely fantastic. And some really old gated communities, one of the ones that we, we hang out in, actually has a gastro pub in the back of it. And you walk along this dirty river and you're like, what is this? And suddenly there's a beautiful little gastro pub 
in the back of a gated community with hundreds of homes. And you're like, this is, how is this existing inside this little gated community? But these things do exist, these cute little places hidden in the back. There's some really amazing lifestyles to be had in these out of the way places here in Nicaragua. And uh, this is one of the things I really wanna to convey to my viewers is um, these opportunities for getting outside of the tourist zones, getting outside of the expat zones. And in some cases like Ciudad Sandino, even getting outside of the mainstream Nicaragua mindset. Most Nicaraguans would never consider Ciudad Sandino. Now, of course, um, nearly 100,000 people call it home. It is a large city, and I have employees there, and they say they would never live anywhere else. They love it there. Even though they have the option to live anywhere in the country, they choose to live there because they feel it gives them the best blend of close to family or close to Managua, uh, cost of living, and, and options, shopping, and restaurants, and, and easy access to things, and good quality internet and everything. You can work from home really easily there, and the weather is not that bad. It's still warm, but like I said, it's cooler than most of Managua, and that makes it cooler than most of the country. This is an area that very few expats will ever cross into. It's off the main path. You're unlikely to ever see it, except maybe just blowing past it on the road. But as an expat looking for a way to get to live in a really nice part of the country at very low cost, have access to a wide degree of things and be able to have a pretty good lifestyle as long as you're willing to attempt to integrate into Nicaraguan society, Ciudad Sandino is a really great example of where opportunity exists to live in new housing, low cost, with beautiful new stuff and constantly new restaurants, new bars, new music venues, new shopping, all that stuff is opening all the time and new residents area. So there's a constant influx of brand new homes being built in this area. These are not old homes being converted or renovated. These are brand new housing developments that are going in on a regular basis. Just in this one little stretch by the Plaza Calle that we show here, there are several totally new housing developments that have gone in in the last 24 months. And there are some pre-existing ones that are not that old that are in the area that have, you know, anchored the community for a while. And so whether you're looking for a little bit lower cost, older community or a brand new one, you want to custom build or just move in right away. All that stuff exists in this area. Plus, they still have completely normal independent homes, not inside a gated community along the main roads and the side roads. There's a lot of different options. And of course, there's very low cost, traditional barrio living as well that very few expats are going to be interested in. But that stuff does exist. This is a dynamic area where you're going to see everything side by side and certainly as you turn off of the uh, Carretera uh, uh, Nueva and turn onto the Pista Gaza going south through Ciudad Sandino there's going to be a little section that's very industrial very dirty you're going to be like oh what is this and that little tiny bit that you walk through in about five to ten minutes is enough that most people never go any further. But you go past that and suddenly you have a vibrant new city that is erupting out of nowhere and uh, really surprising. Even for those of us who live here, this is a really surprising development in this area. Shows an exciting new future for Nicaragua and something that I think a lot of expats should really take seriously because I think areas like this are absolutely fantastic for expats in many cases. Now it's gonna be someone special. It's not gonna be your average expat, but someone who's looking for a place where they can raise a family, they can get a little bit more for their money, they can get a large yard and a small house and have a comfortable place at a very low cost, have it be really easy to be able to commute into the city, maybe not for work, but for shopping and restaurants and nightlife and that kind of stuff. It can be really nice to live in a community like this, be able to take a taxi for very little, or you can easily keep a car. Most of the houses in this area have garages, so the expectation is that you may easily have a car of your own or two and drive into Managua. The trip is about 15 minutes to get to the outskirts and about 30, 40 minutes to get to nearly all of the city. So you can do all of those famous Nicaraguan activities at all the restaurants and museums and, and shopping centers and get to the airport and, uh, you know, whatever you want to do. All of that stuff is easily accessible and it's not hard driving in the city. I drive in Managua all the time. Don't even think about it twice. Like it's a very easy city to drive around if you live here. If you're a tourist, I always recommend not taking up driving in whatever country you're in as a tourist. It's just not worth it. Nicaragua, notwithstanding, just just in general, driving as a tourist is rarely something that makes a lot of sense once you've left your own driving zone and you have to accommodate a different driving style or potentially different rules or whatever. It's probably not worth it. But if you are living here, no big deal at all. 
you get used to it in no time. You're very familiar with everything you need to do and driving around the city is, is super easy. Or you can just take a taxi or there are buses. There are so many options at different price points, but very rarely would an expat need to leave someplace like Ciudad Sandino. It has everything you need right there in the community until you need to maybe do some specialty shopping where you want to go to really fancy restaurants. But there's a, quite a restaurant selection, even just in this little tiny zone. It's amazing that Ciudad Sandino easily has as much or more than Leon does. That's worth noting that in just this little area, you're able to walk to nearly as many restaurants as you can in downtown Leon, the second largest city in the country. That puts some perspective on things. That means that low cost living without the colonial structures, just modern houses that are very efficient, that are attractive, very comfortable, can be had for very little money and a broad range of access to things that you can walk to and then a drive to an unbelievable number of things with a very easy drive. That says a lot. And you'll notice in some of the videos that we had like playgrounds mixed in with these restaurants. These are family areas. Kids are out playing at night. Maybe not a ton, but just in the little bit that I was there, there were kids out on swing sets and playing with each other. It's a great way to get to know kids in your community because you go out to restaurants and kids actually do get out and play with each other. It's a much more social uh, world than you're used to in North America in most cases. And uh, that can be a great way. A lot of people ask me, well, how are kids going to, you know, get out and make friends there? What, Kids are generally pretty good at that and give them an opportunity. They're going to want to go play and eventually they're going to make friends. When I lived in Italy, my kids would go out and play with the kids in Italian and figure it out. When we lived in Spain, they did the same thing. They made great friends with the neighborhood. Kids ran all over the town uh, doing everything in Spanish. Same thing here. Give the opportunity. Kids will go out and make friends. These communities make it easy to bond with your neighbors, to get to know people from not too far away. It's a, it's a still a relatively small community, even though it has a lot of resources in one spot. Uh, and that can be really, really nice. So I am a fan of Ciudad Sandino in general. I know that a lot of people give it a lot of flack, but when we show it, it's consistently such a nice area. So something to think about. As a tourist, it's worthless. There's just no tourism items in the city. There's no reason that you would go there. But as someone considering a life in Nicaragua, this is a style of life that so rarely gets mentioned or seen and, you know, partially because no one's particularly interested in it until they see it. And so many people are interested in not letting you see it that when you put it together, it's like, well, I'd really like to see what a home looks like in there. Well, they generally don't let you do that. Well, then how are people supposed to know that they might want to live there? Well, you'd need a family member who has an e exactly the same spot and you get to know, like, that's how it works. Even for the locals, there's a lot of like, how do I know about these things? Uh, that's a struggle throughout the country and that's something that they have to overcome. Um, there's a lot of things like this. They're starting to build new homes, for example, in gated communities. That's fantastic. But they, the social structures necessary to show off those places and sell them are not necessarily in place yet. So things have to happen. Sometimes, you know, there's a chicken and an egg and you're not sure what you're going to end up with first. Now, all of this I filmed in Ciudad Sandino uh, right as I was doing the show. Those uh, watching know that I was on Channel 8 uh, a few days ago. This was all filmed. That's where I stayed in Ciudad Sandino, where I often do uh, when I'm going to do things in the city. So I filmed things in that area. Uh, so after uh, we wrap up this episode. I'm going to run. Uh, my father was able to record and upload uh, the video from the interview on Channel 8. Now it's in Spanish and it's not very long. It's just a few minutes, uh, but you do get to see me uh, and Marcelo from my team in Spanish. And I know some of you are always like, boy, Scott, I wish you would do the show in Spanish, which would be ridiculous for a lot of reasons. You don't want to see me doing this show in Spanish, but I have been on TV now twice in Spanish. I hope to be more in the future. Uh, and you can see you know, what my level is and, and what it's like. And it's certainly harder when you're being interviewing, interviewed because you have to understand what you're being asked and you have to respond to what they said. If I'm doing my own show, I can edit it and I can only talk about things I know how to talk about. So that can make it a little bit easier. So this is definitely a little bit of a challenge, but I really like doing it. Uh, and I'm really glad that I got to be on TV. So, so thanks to everyone at Channel 8 for making that happen. That was, uh, it's always a lot of fun. And not just being on TV is fun, like it's interesting to get to see how the studios work too. I find the whole thing very interesting. So we had a really good time and, uh, Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, it'd be much appreciated. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller that helps make these trips and all these different things, the cameras and all that that we do possible. So we're able to bring you this kind of content. Hopefully you find it useful. Definitely get down those comments. Let me know what you're looking for more information on, questions that you have about things. That's how we know what people uh, will want us to talk about. If you could share on social media, tell a friend uh, about the show, that'd be fantastic. We're going to roll the couple minutes of the Channel 8 interview for you and then 
at the very end, we're going to show a couple different episodes that if you would click on one of them, it helps support the show. So we appreciate it. Have a good one. I'll see you all tomorrow. Adelante, Abrilita. Gracias, muchachos. En este momento tengo información espectacular para que ustedes vayan ahorita mismo a conectarse a YouTube. Porque hay un youtuber que nos está dando buena publicidad. ¿Por qué les digo esto? Porque él en su canal de YouTube está publicando lugares bellos de Nicaragua, las cosas que ustedes pueden venir a hacer y el turismo que se puede realizar desde fuera hasta acá en Nicaragua. Y por supuesto estoy hablando de Alan Miller y de Nica Rumba. Primero vamos a hablar del canal de YouTube, así que bienvenidos a Alan y a Marcela. Y los dos estarán hablándome de la plataforma también de Nica Rumba. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo están? ¿Cómo se encuentran hoy? Bien, gracias. bien, gracias. ¿Eh? <risa> bueno, quiero preguntarles, ¿de dónde nació la idea a usted de crear su canal de YouTube? Ah, originalmente uh, fue uh, solo un canal para información para mi papá. Uh, ah. Porque uh, uh, vive uh, muy lejos de, de mi papá y... Uh, fue más fácil para comunicar sobre mi vida, sí. uh, pero cuando uh, yo uh, jugué a uh, Nicaragua, se mudó a Nicaragua. Sí, uh, hace tres años, uh, mi vida es un poco más interesante para <risa> la, en, en los Estados Unidos, en Canadá, sí. uh, y entonces fue, fue todo orgánico. Uh, mi vida fue uh, en mi, porque fue solo un blog. Normal. Es mi vida, es mi día. Tu día a día. Sí, sí, simplemente. Um, pero cuando yo uh, visité a uh, uh, Corinto y Chinandega, um, uh, inmediatamente la gente dice, oh, es interesante, es, es diferente de tu vida cada día. Y yo, yo, yo dije, uh, oh, oh, la gente... <risa> Uh, tiene uh, interesante sí, sobre, sobre Nicaragua, sobre uh, ubicaciones diferentes. Uh, entonces fue casi un accidente hace <risa> dos años y media. Y ahora uh, mi, mi focus, mi uh, enfoque, sí, ah, focus, sí uh, es uh, turismo y información para relocación, porque Uh, ahorita mucha gente en Norteamericana, especialmente un poco en Europa, uh, uh, tiene... Uh, El interés de venir. Sí, porque la vida allí es difícil ahora. Y ahora es una oportunidad grande para un vida más tranquilo, tranquila uh, y segura. Es importante sí. para mucha gente. Entonces, uh, es una oportunidad nueva para para uh, pro conocer sí, uh, el país. Es bonito también poder ver cómo la gente de fuera también se está inspirando ¿no? en canales de YouTube para poder viajar. Por eso que a mí me gusta eh, también apoyar en ese caso a las personas que nos apoyan. Y por eso pues estamos por acá con Alan para que él nos platicara sobre esta plataforma. Por supuesto, para que nosotros vayamos a seguirlo porque tiene videos bastante interesantes. Ahora él reside acá en Nicaragua, vive en León. Sí. Vive en León. Él, le escuchan ese acentito porque él es estadounidense. Él es de Nueva York. Ajá. Y eh, por supuesto se vino y se enamoró de Nicaragua, ¿no? Y eh, por, por esa misma razón también estaba queriendo eh, enseñarles a ustedes cosas que ha aprendido acá, cosas que ha conocido acá, para que ustedes igual puedan conocerlos, ¿no? Más allá, porque a veces también los propios nicas no conocemos muy bien todo Nicaragua y nos inspiramos en personas que sí. puedan hacerlo de esa manera. Bueno, ¿Ya? quiero preguntarles, Nica Rumba nace después con la idea del YouTube de Alan. ¿Cómo sí, nace? Una cosa llevó a otra. Entonces, Nica Rumba principalmente fue pensado para los turistas, para que tuvieran como una guía, porque siempre que que ellos están aquí, están como preguntando ¿y dónde podemos ir? ¿qué lugares podemos visitar para comer restaurante o qué concierto? entonces de ahí nació la idea 
principalmente para los turistas, pero sí. vimos que fue teniendo una aceptación súper bonita con todos aquí. Entonces, la idea es que Nicarumba crezca y también, eh, de hecho, gracias a todos los artistas que nos apoyan Qué bonito, y sí. los locales, restaurantes, eh, hospedajes también y muchas revistas turísticas también nos apoyan y esa es la idea, pues. Es una guía Vos te metes a nicarumba.com y tenés toda la información que uno necesita. Eh, desde el artista, dónde va a estar tocando, a qué hora, en qué local, ¿Qué la dirección y la ciudad. Sí, vos seleccionás la ciudad donde te encontrás, inmediatamente te salen todos los eventos que hay. Fiestas, ese día. Conciertos, Fiestas, conciertos, dónde ir a comer. Sí, sí. sí. Eventos Incluso culturales. eventos culturales por la tarde, en el día, todo. Muy bonito. Entonces, nosotros podemos entrar a nicarumba.com y vamos a encontrar todo. Exacto. Sí. Toda la información que necesita. Por el momento, es solamente web. Sí, por adelante. el momento, por el momento. Todo se está cocinando todavía. Qué bello. ¿Cuánto tiempo tiene Nicarumba? Menos de un año. Es algo nuevo. Algo nuevo, pero ha ido avanzando súper rápido porque los artistas nos han estado apoyando mucho, de hecho. Qué bonito. Bueno, realmente me gusta también que hayan tomado inspiración a Alan que él está siempre contando cosas, ¿no? Y lo hace de una manera bastante bonita. Como lo estaba viendo yo en, en su YouTube, él empieza a hablar de su día y se desenvuelve súper bien. Es como, sí, hoy hice esto y fui a tal lugar, compré aquí. Com o sea, sí, algo súper espontáneo. Súper <ríe> bonito, lo estaba viendo yo antes de entrar eh, a la entrevista y es, es bastante orgánico, la verdad. Sí. Y eso es lo que ha llamado la atención también de su contenido en YouTube. Entonces, si ustedes... Eh, quieren ir a, a darle una ojeadita, pueden directamente ir a buscar a Alan Miller en su blog para que ustedes también puedan ver sus videos. ¿Cómo, cómo aparece? ¿Alan Miller solamente? Scott, Alan Scott. Miller. Scott. Alan Miller. Scott. Ok, Scott, Alan Miller, blog, para que ustedes vayan a buscarlo también. Y ya saben que nicarumba.com es la revista donde ustedes pueden entrar directamente <risa> para ver cada una de las actividades que se está realizando en cada ciudad a cada hora, en el día, en la noche, a la hora que sea, por si ustedes andan queriendo salir, salir de la rutina, ir a ver algo diferente, salir con su familia, con sus amigos, definitivamente esta es una buena oportunidad para que ustedes también tengan una guía de cuáles son las cosas que ustedes pueden hacer. Muchísimas gracias, gracias a ambos a por esa información y definitivamente nos vamos a quedar viendo todavía más información de Alan, pero en este momento vamos a una pequeña pausa y ya regresamos con más. 